That's what we doing. What up, what up, PC fam? How y'all living today? Welcome to another episode of Chill with Chill. Um, mm-hmm. Y'all know what time it is. We're here to talk ball, here to talk real hoop talk. Chill, how you living? Running good, brother. We we, we literally, we, talk, we, we, got, we got some hoop talk today. We got some real stuff that, uh, that I want to go over that I think that I, I got a theory about some things and mm-hmm. I think some people might like it. So jog, so so basically, basically get into your brain capacity and and so you can understand or make me understand why this is what it is. So this is good stuff today. Yeah, no doubt. Um, before we get all the way into it, y'all, I want to remind you to make sure that you go to playerschoicemerch.com. Get your get your merch. You know, we all up here equipped with it. Chill got the X casual T on. I got the casual hoodie on. Uh, but there's more merch in there than that. It's a lot of merch in there. We got beanies, T-shirts, uh, man, hoodies, whatever you want. You name it. Go in there. Check it out. Make sure to get something for you. Your kids, your girl, your mom, your brother, your auntie, everybody. Grab mm-hmm. some merch. Um, make sure you rock it too. Make sure you rock it. Uh, take pictures in it. Tag us, tag us on Instagram, TikTok, uh, all the all the social media joints that y'all are on. Make sure y'all flood it with players' choice merch. Man, I don't get that. Uh, don't rock, don't 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 buy it and I rock it. That don't make no sense. Right. I mean, what you gonna buy it for if you ain't gonna rock it? As soon as right. I got my gear. I, 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 as soon as I got my gear, I flaunted mine. So, no doubt, I definitely rock mine. I was I was just outside, had mine on at the at the uh, at the gym. <laughs> um, but uh, man, chill time. What's whew, almost there? We almost there. Is it really does feel like we was just in October talking about how much we can wait for hoop, hoop to start, and now we are at the end of the regular season. What do we got? Six. Eight games. Some people got eight. Some people got six games. We at the end. It's the playoff race. Two weeks from two weeks from Saturday, the playoffs start. Two weeks from Saturday. Two weeks from Saturday. Wow. Two okay. So what, what's that? That's the the twentieth. Not even that late. I think it's like the seventeenth or the eighteenth, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, it's here, y'all. <laughs> it's here, and now is when you know we see. Uh, for everybody, you see all the predictions that we made at the beginning of the season, all the predictions we made in the summer. We get to see if those come to fruition. We get to see if if we were right about these texts, if we were wrong about it. Um, just how, how did overall, chill. Mm-hmm. If you could have, if you could use just a couple words to describe this season, mm-hmm. how would you describe this NBA season? Very unpredictable. I did not think that the stuff that was, I mean, again, we the prognosticators, we're projecting before the season starts. That's us. We're going over who we think is going to win, who we think is going to do this. And we base in our opinions largely on what we saw in the past and what we think Shea Gilders Alexander is going to do, what Jason Tatum or Joel Embiid is going to do moving forward based on what they did the year before. I know I understand that it's a new season, but, we're basing off what we just saw and how it could get better, how teams could get worse, stuff like that. That's what we're basing our logic on. So when I see Oklahoma City at the top of the Western Conference, that was very unpredictable. Did I see Oklahoma City as a playoff team? I did. I absolutely had them as a playoff team off the strength of Chet Holmgren giving them that dynamic that they didn't have last year. I expected Shea to be better. Even though he was pretty awesome last year, I expected him to be better, which is another reason why I thought they were going to be a playoff team. Did I expect him to be in the MVP race this close? No, I did not. I did not expect him to make that jump, and he did. That was unpredictable. That that, that was something that I that was something that I did not predict. The mm-hmm. Celtics. I did think the Celtics would be at the Eastern Conference. I wasn't surprised about them. I did not think that the Detroit Pistons would be this bad. I did. I did they, not they stink. They, no, I did not think that they would be this bad. I did think that Washington would be this bad. However, I didn't think that Jordan Poole would have been as bad as he was. In fact, I thought that was the reason why he was going to be good, because they were going to be a bad team. And because of that, they were going to give him the basketball and essentially just turn him loose. And I yeah. thought that he would just basically thrive on that, only except he didn't. In yeah. fact, it was it, it, it was the complete opposite, of, complete opposite of that. And I was... I was I was totally wrong on that. Um, unpredictable is 
with the season. I thought the Lakers were going to be a lot better. I, before the season started, Ox, you were big on Phoenix. I thought there was only one contender in the Western Conference. And I thought that that was the Lakers. Considering mm -hmm. where they were last year, they were in the Western Conference Championship. Even though they had gotten swept, I felt like, okay, now we get to see a whole season of this team together. We didn't see that last year. We basically got bits and pieces of them. Ruby got traded. They traded for Ruby. Things like that ended up happening. Well, now we get a whole season with them, and it didn't go the way I thought it would go. Minnesota's a lot better than what I thought they were going to be. I thought Minnesota would be a, a top five seed. Did I think Minnesota would be at the top of the Western Conference? No, I did not. Mm -mm. Even though I didn't envision both Cat and Rudy, I envisioned them two being this dynamic duo, which they were, which they were with, 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 with Rudy as the defender and the rim protector and the, and the finisher that he is at the rim and Cat being the offensive player that he is. So. I thought yeah. that they would be a lot better. Definitely, definitely. Um, Morris, you said this is a wild title. This is a wild, wild title, title, Morris. I'm like, who would even come up with a title like this? Crazy. <laughs> but uh, but I, I, I gotta say, I'm I'm a little shocked. Well, I I think I caught the East pretty close to what it is. Um, pretty close. The West, all wrong. I got the West all wrong, chill. If you remember, I thought that. The whole entire Pacific Division was going to be top six teams. I thought I thought the whole Pacific Division were going to be top six teams, and the only team I was even considering wouldn't make the playoffs would be the Warriors. I thought everybody else was going to run the West. I thought I thought this might be the best, the most competitive and best the Pacific Division has ever been. And boy, was well, I wrong. Well, you, you still, on some level. I mean, don't get me wrong. We 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 got the Lakers. We got the we got the Warriors wrong, and the Lakers. I thought they would be better, considering. But with that being said, Big Ox. I mean, we we, we still with the play-in tournament. We still mm -hmm. have all that that entire division in the postseason. Right. We still got the Lakers. We still got the Lakers. We still got the Clippers. We still got the Warriors. We still got the Kings. We still got Phoenix and Sacramento. Mm -hmm. All of them in that division are in the, are are. are Technically, in the postseason. Now, I do understand what you're saying. Where from one to six, that was the yeah. that was basically what was going to be the Western Conference standings, not just right. in the playoff mix. Right, I get that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, win some, you lose some. Yeah. But uh, I mean, things are just changing. You know, things are changing in the in the. It's so unpredictable. I think a lot of the unpredictability has to do with just the way things are changing. Um, yeah. from defense, uh, offense. I mean. When you got guys, when you got teams that are shooting 43s a game, or you know, sometimes 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 these teams are getting up 40 40 uh threes a game, you know what I mean? So sometimes it can just shift. Some things happen. If you got a, a team that's uh inferior to another team and this inferior team comes out and knocks down 22 threes, I mean, how are you supposed to beat them? You know what I mean? And, and and especially if this team over here is shooting a lot of threes, and let's say they make seven tonight, well, this team's gonna win, you know what I mean? Yes. So it just it just goes. So with that being said, like what is going on with the offense in the NBA? Like how, 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 how do we describe this new, new version of basketball? I'm glad you brought that up box. Cause I got a theory on the triangle offense and why it was outdated. So Ox, you've been playing basketball for a long time and an offense that's been implemented since we were kids is the motion offense. Motion mm -hmm. offense is still in the, it's in the NBA, it's in college, it's in grammar school, it's in Europe. Well, the motion offense has been around since the 50s. It's essentially handing off the basketball. Just these guys across the these guys across the perimeter just throw the ball to the throw the ball to the wing, go screen away. Throw the ball to the wing, go screen away. That's not complicated. It, and because it's not a complicated offense, it's something that you can continue to run. So then you implement the triangle offense. So why did the triangle offense get outdated? Well, the triangle offense got outdated, I feel like, because of the complicity to it. So if you think about the if you think about the motion offense, there was no complicity to it. It was pass, screen away, pass, down screen. Same logic with the UCLA cut. Pass, screen, and cut. Pass, screen, and cut. Well, the same logic was going on with the triangle only accept that there's more options. So because there's more options, that means that you have to think a little bit more. When you get the ball on the wing, 
Now there's more action going on around you. You have more options to look for because there's more cuts going on. There's more down screening. Not only is there more down screening, there's more back screening. So now you have to use your brain and you have to think a little bit more. And I think that because a lot of these guys in today's game, they don't really study the game. Not only do they not study the game, I'm on record saying that I'm not sure how many of them actually know how to play basketball. So if you know how to play basketball, you know who you're looking for when they cut. You know how to pass to them when they cut. You know when the bounce pass. You know when a chest pass is necessary. You know when a guy is back screening. The guy who's going to be open is the guy who back screens because he's the one who's going to flash back to the basketball. You know stuff like that. So the reason why I feel like the triangle offense got outdated was because the complexity of the offense – makes a lot of guys think, and these guys in today's game, I feel like they don't study the game as much as they should, and because they don't study as much, and, and that's largely due to them having other stuff going on. See, back then, there was there was a whole lot of nothing going on, like outside mm -hmm. of a, a sneaker deal or maybe a McDonald's commercial. My reputation mm -hmm. was my game, Ox. So because right. my reputation was my game, I had, to, I had to perfect my craft. And in perfecting my craft, I had to watch tape. I had to go over. I had to study the offense. I had to understand where I was supposed to be. I had to understand where you were supposed to be. You had to understand where I was supposed to be. So understanding, you know, screen to screen, understanding slipping screens. So when you get into the triangle offense, it's really not that difficult for me to understand because all I'm doing is just paying attention to things going on off the ball because I'm studying the game. Now, I don't think the offenses are really that complex because what it looks like, it just looks like more of an updated version. Of the, of, of the motion offense where dribble handoffs that's what the motion is mm -hmm. dribble handoffs and, and and screen away that's what the motion offense is mm -hmm. except you're adding a pick and roll to it which it, which really isn't that complicated yeah it seems like a lot of driving kick a lot of driving kick too um, yes i do I, I remember when kobe was saying and i just saw this clip actually uh, a couple of weeks ago i think and he was kind of saying it's just more like accidental basketball that's what we call it he called it accidental basketball or something something close to that and I, I see the same thing it's like we're not really like there used to be when we called with we'll run a play and they'd be like okay we're getting this out of that like it's gonna be it, it might end it might end in a down pick in a cross screen and I know I'm getting my my small forward coming off of that coming off a baseline curl, he's catching, shooting, boom. That's what we're looking for. There's other options in the play too, but that's that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that shot. It looks yeah. like nowadays it's more of like you're saying high picks, screen away. I'm, I'm passing and I'm just getting to the rim and kicking out until we can get a somewhat decent look at the three ball. Like, And we're just waiting until we get that. So uh, to me, that's like what Kobe explained as accidental offense. Right. And on top of that, Ice, and, and on top of that, Ox, when you look at offenses today, even though the shot clock is at 24 seconds, the shot clock was at 24 seconds years ago, there doesn't seem to be a lot of options in the offenses, with the exception of Joker. Because Joker, I, I, that's why Joker's a guy who I feel like he would thrive in a triangle, because Joker is so cerebral and he knows who to look for, he knows what to look for. So, for example, if I'm thinking about the Utah Jazz, where Stockton's coming down, Stock comes down, and he gets the ball to Hornacek on the wing. I got Malone coming to the. I got Malone coming to the elbow. He's going to set a UCLA back screen on. Or let me let me rewind. I got Hornacek with the ball at the top. Hornacek's got the ball at the top. Stockton's going to actually pop. Stockton's going to pop. Hornacek's going to pitch him the ball. I got Malone setting the screen, setting the back screen, which is called the UCLA cut. He's going to set that. On Jeff Hornacek's man. Jeff Hornacek is going to cut to the basket. That's the first option. That's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. I'm looking for him. So if I don't get him on the first option, what's next is now I got Malone who comes to sets the who comes and sets a ball screen on Stockton where they run a pick and roll. While they run while they're running a pick and roll, I got a double screen action on the other side of the floor where Jeff Hornacek now runs off a double screen and he can get a wide open look at the elbow or maybe at the three point line. So that's three options where Stockton comes off that Stockton comes off that pick and roll where Malone is where Malone is screening. He can dump he can dump it to Malone on the on, on the on the pick and dive, or he can shoot that. That's option number that's option number three and four. And then with Hornacek coming off that screen, that's option number five. If none of that works, we can get right back into our motion offense. These are things when I'm watching the game, I don't see. 
I don't see mm -hmm. a lot of guys in today's game. I don't see a lot of offense in today's game where you can get a lot of action, where you can get a number of different options. Because in today's game, it's it's actually get the ball, run a pick and roll, run a pick and dive, and then that's it. Run a pick and roll, run a pick and dive, and that's it. So, and really quickly, this right here, this guy, Mike, you know what he said yesterday? He came up yesterday uh, on, on Fluent and Chill, and we mm -hmm. talked about, he, he, he came in and asked the question about Kobe Bryant. That was okay. it. He didn't give any logic whatsoever. He Do didn't talk about it. He, 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 he talked about uh, the top five Lakers all time, and I explained why I said it's not ridiculous to think that, even though I got Kobe Bryant third all time on the Lakers list. Mm -hmm. I explained why there, there'd be a conversation for other guys. He didn't have anything to say about that. And then he talked about mm -hmm. my top 10, and then he said, Larry Bird is better than Kobe Bryant. And that was it. He didn't say anything. He didn't say why he was better. He didn't give any legit logic on why. That's all he said was, Bird better than Kobe Bryant. Come on, OG. Come on, OG. But he demolished me. So, okay, you absolutely demolished me. But anyway, as, we, as, 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 I, as I was saying, as, as I was saying, the offense that I'm talking about with the Utah Jazz, you got a number of different options in that. You can have that in today's offense. I think that the problem we're having with these guys today is I don't think a lot of these guys think the game. And because they don't think the game, I feel like they don't know the game. Right. I do I do question a lot of things um, like IQ uh, when I see certain yeah. certain plays. But I don't know. I think it's more so kind of the the basketball culture is to just get, just get shots up. Like, let's just yeah. get them up. Let's get them up. So it's not so much as – it's not so much quality over quantity anymore. It's more so let's just get as many as we can and hopefully we score more than the other guy. Right. That seems like that's kind of the trend now. Um, but let me get to this super chat real quick from Joseph S. We have says, chill. How, how many Dion episodes before your life before your life ends? Hey, none, to be honest with you, because I mean to Ox's point, because Ox, let's be clear about one thing, guys. My man Ox, Ox is very simplistic when it comes to logic. Okay, this makes sense. Because logically, when you say there aren't teams that aren't getting up for the world champs, well, if you say it like that, well, it actually makes sense that teams are laying down and not getting up for them. Meanwhile, a Laker team, everybody's getting up for them. Well, in theory, that does make sense. But I can compound that. I can compound, you know, the elementary logic with well, that means that the Lakers a far inferior team than the Nuggets off the strength that nobody's laying down for the Lakers. Everybody right. that comes in and plays the Lakers thinks that they can beat them. Not all teams are coming in playing against the Nuggets going, yo, we got these dudes. There are teams that are actually like, yo, let's just go ahead and get these lumps and get out of here. Right. And that's, that's, see, that makes, I mean, I don't know if that's what Dion was trying to say, but I'm like, if you look at it that way, you know, it could that would make sense, you right. know. But I mean, I, I, can, I know I can compound. I can compound the. the I, I can compound the, the ABC one, two, three. Yes, I can do that. Right, right. But I mean, I know the best team usually has a target on their back. Yes, usually, usually, if you're the, if you're the better team, you walk in the gym and everybody's like, okay, we getting we getting them today. You know, because mm -hmm. everybody everybody wants to knock knock off the king. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I, I I know that for sure. So right. that's that's definitely one thing. But I was right. just trying to give another insight at it. Like maybe Dion got a point, kind of. But mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah. Shout out Dion. Shout out uh, him being such a such a loyal okay. fan to what he believes in. You know, and just you know. And also another thing I want everybody to also remember with Tim Duncan, Anthony Davis thing. We gotta remember. Dion was born in what do you say 2001 three, three? three he's a, he's a young fella you know what i'm saying so he he probably never really saw it while it was going on with Tim Duncan a lot of times when you have when you have to go back and watch you're not going to see what everybody else saw right. like i get i guarantee i don't see the same thing um from Elgin Baylor as some people that saw when it happened i mean i still i can still i still know he was good even Dr. J, and I I love Dr. J, but I know for a fact that there's a reason my mom likes Dr. J more than I do because yeah. it's like she's seen all of this live. So yeah. you know what I mean. But and on top of that, and 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 on top of that, uh, and on top of that, Ox, when you put yourself back in that time, so it's not just seeing Tim Duncan play; it's actually what's going on. So what's the logic going on 
in 2003 between Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett? What's the logic mm -hmm. going on between those two? What's the what's the conversation between Tim Duncan and Shaq? What's the conversation between Tim Duncan and Chris Webber or Rashid Wallace? That's a conversation. These things are going on during that time. And with these things going on during that time, that adds to how good this dude was. That adds to how good his game is and how we talking about his game. Because it's not just an open pivot. It's not just a, a, a left hook, a left jump hook. It's not just a right jump hook. Well, it's in contrast. It's it's contrasting with what Chris Webber was doing during that time. It's mm -hmm. also how Ben Wallace was defending him during that time. Him going up against Rasheed Wallace and how he was handling himself against Rasheed Wallace. All of this stuff comes into play when we're talking about these dudes. And if you're not there and you can't dig that conversation, you only going off what you've seen on tape. And because right. you only going off what you've seen on tape, you can't really dig the full effect of it. Right. Hey, chill before, because once again, you know, we, we've been doing this lately, getting to the lobby early, so I'm going to get to these guys in the back. But before, chill, I want to ask you a question. I don't know why I just thought about this. So how do you feel about Hakeem Warwick? Hakeem Warwick was something simple. He, he was something different. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. I, I actually thought that he was going to be a lot better pro than what he was. He kind of had that, uh, he kind of gave me that Marvin Harrison vibe, like a ridiculous athlete, small. He wasn't that big, but uh, he played a lot bigger than what he was. Um, yeah. Downhill speed, not just downhill speed, one of the better open field runners. So if he got you in the open field, like, forget it. I thought he was going to be a better pro than what he was. I was surprised that he didn't become as good as he could have been when he was at, when, after he left Florida State. Are we talking about the same? No, you, 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 you talking about work. I think you're talking about work done. I'm the, I'm thinking we're talking about somebody completely. You, you're, you're talking about, about Keen Ward from Syracuse. That's what you're Syracuse. talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking, okay, because there's our Keen Ward that used to play for Florida State. And he used oh, to play okay. wide receiver. Yeah. So uh Hakeem Ward that played at, at, at Syracuse with, yeah. with, with with Carmelo Anthony. Yeah, I mean, he was yeah, a that's solid, what I'm he, was, about. he was a solid pro. Yes, he was right, he, right. he was a solid pro. I, I remember him. Now mm -hmm. he kind of he kind of gave me that. Now he wasn't the athlete that Stroh Miles Swift was. There was a part of me that felt like he could possibly be as good as Stromile, but no, nah, he wasn't. He wasn't the athlete that Stromile Smith was. I right. thought he was a solid pro, a yeah. solid pro. Yeah, Stromile Smith used to quit, catch bodies. Yes, he did, yo. Yeah, <laughs> get, oh, go, go ahead and stand in the in the middle of that lane when yeah. with that six nine eagle flying down if, the lane. Hey, if y'all in the chat, if you don't know about Stromile Swift, just just. Go you you don't even gotta watch full games, just watch highlights, just watch some highlights mm -hmm. and just check out the athleticism. But like I said, we're gonna get to the lobby. I got football breakdown in the back. I got e, let, me, let me go football. What's what's up, football? How you been? What I, up? I, I haven't seen you up on chill and chilling. Well, it's been almost it's been a long time. Can't hear you, you muted, brother. You muted. Can't hear you, brother. Oh, my bad. My bad, my bad. Yeah. What's, what's, what's good, y'all? I've only been yeah. on here one time and then I'm I usually join open gym. Yeah. And, Chop it up with Mars and Dub and the rest of the crew that's on there. Yeah. So, uh, what's the format? Do I just ask questions or? This is what we're doing here. That's why it's called Chill with Chill. Okay, well, Chill. Look, I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a probably second behind Jalen and the LeBron fan club, but yeah, I I I think it's phenomenal how he's playing this year. Yeah. Um, like. I just I've never seen a player. Um, I've had this opinion that I think he's the most viable team sport athlete I've ever seen. Mm. Uh, when you consider his responsibility on defense, his offensive value, mm -hmm. longevity, um, athleticism relative to a sport, um, skill ability, mm -hmm. IQ. Like I want people to realize this, right? If you were to do like top five smartest players in NBA history, you mm -hmm. would say LeBron. If you were to say the top five most athletic players in NBA history, you would say LeBron. Mm -hmm. If you were to say the top five greatest offensive scorers in NBA history, you would say LeBron. Top five passers in NBA history, you would still say LeBron. Mm -hmm. What other sport can you say that about any other – oh, top five most versatile defenders, especially mm -hmm. for his position, you could argue LeBron. Right. So my question is – what player can you say in any other sport that has that level of impact on both sides of the ball with that level of mentality and IQ, um, positional versatility, and longevity? 
So if I think about hockey, I could say Wayne Gretzky, but Wayne, Wayne Gretzky, Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky wasn't the defenseman that James was. I mean, Wayne Gretzky was more of a he was a he was more of a puck scorer, right? right. He was really good. He was really good with the puck. He was really good in the clutch. He was more on the offensive side. Um, he could defend. He could handle himself. But they have goons in hockey. So even though I look at how I look at hockey, I always look at hockey. I was bad. That's basically basketball on ice. I'm a hockey right. fan. I'm a casual when it comes to hockey, but I am a hockey fan. In football, you primarily play on one side of the back, on, on one side Correct. of the football. But you can have an equally, you can have you can have a you can have very much the same impact. So I think about Lawrence Taylor, the impact that he had on the on on the on the defensive side of the ball, where offenses basically had to construct their offense around his defensive skill set. Offenses had to do that. So quarterbacks had to make sure that they were protected. They had to make sure that they got rid of the football when they got out of the pocket. But they they, they weren't. They, they they weren't. I mean, he hadn't. He didn't have the the total impact on the game like James did, where he was affecting the game on the offensive side of the ball like James was. When you think about baseball, so I mean, Babe Ruth. He he did in addition to hit the ball during the dead ball era. He also pitched in the World Series. I think he threw a no hitter in the World Series, something ridiculous like that. And that was a hundred years ago. I know that sounds ridiculous right. today, but that was a hundred years ago. So crazy football, baseball, basketball, hockey. James may be the best athlete, overall athlete, not of the 20th century. No, not of the not of the 20th or the 21st century. He might be the best athlete in 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 not modern sports, but in sports history. He may be. I, I've said that, and people think I'm crazy. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, he's year 20. I like, I want people to watch. Like, <laughs> it's silly when I watch him play basketball. I'm like, and I've been saying it for years. And people are like, oh, you're. You're glazing. You're overdoing it. You're on your knees. I'm like, no. I I love sports. My first sport that I watch and I play will be so with soccer or football. Right. I love I, I love sports. I have never I've watched many sports. I have never seen. If you love sports, you have to appreciate someone like LeBron because you're not going to see it again. Like, yeah. you're not going to see it. Like this guy. If you're building a prototype and we're just like, I want the baseline athletic prototype for any sport not even just basketball it's you would him. be like let me get him, him. like sure. speed first yeah. step durability biomechanics um coordination like it's not just the explosiveness he yeah. always lands on his feet he takes contact finishes lands on his feet right. ambidextrous right. speed deceleration you know, my man have you ever heard of jerry rice yeah. jerry rice six eight no, he is not. Is he 250? 6'9", <laughs> 250. And by the way, I've seen LeBron James up close. There's nothing 6'7", or 6'8", about He's 8 bit like, 6'9". Every like, bit bro, No, like, that's the fact. That's the fact. Like, LeBron, he, like, you, can, you can name the athlete, and I'm going to tell you what LeBron has over him, that, that, the LeBron, what LeBron has that he does. Right. You can name it. To, just, to get, just to put some context on this, we are, in, we, we are where we are with him at this point. And we got people who think that he's cheating. Like, they don't think that it's realistic that you could do what he's doing. That's how good he is. Like, and the reason why, and the reason why we, and the reason why people think that is off the strength that we never see nobody else doing it. So he has to be cheating. He has to be. There's like, no like, way to like, go wrong. Like, like, big off, like, let me just name the athletes that people always bring when they talk about the greatest athletes of all time. Bo Jackson. Cool. Guess what? LeBron is taller than him and probably faster than him. Like, probably he, he, about that. Man. I don't know. Come on, He's, I mean, you can do you, you, you cap it now. No, no, I'm not capping. I've, I've literally never seen. Oh, it's all oh, you think there's no version of Bo Jackson that's I don't think it's faster than 09 LeBron. That's me personally. Just that's so me. Know, Bo, Bo Jackson still has the on record unofficial 40 time, which is 419. That's, that's to this day, by the way. And he did that, and he did that 40 years ago. That's still that's on fine. record. Even if he's a little bit has a little bit faster top end speed. LeBron still has how many more pounds on him and is a little, just a tad bit slower and how many more inches. That's what I'm saying. Cam Newton, free. He's not as fast as LeBron, probably can't jump as high. Yeah. And, and LeBron probably a, a better, has is probably more explosive in terms of jumping than Bo Jackson. I know you ran up a wall, but LeBron can definitely jump higher than, 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 Bo, than Bo Jackson. It's still like, running up a wall, yo. <laughs> like, Will, Ch Will Chamberlain is probably the only comp because I never got to – and those are the those, that, those are the only two I'll even consider. Yeah, Everyone like, yeah. but anyway, that that's all I want to say. I think no. I, I know I know people speak a lot about LeBron, but 
I want to speak more because I think it's understanding he's only going to be appreciated when he's gone. And, like, I made a statement that he can shoot like Steph, right? People were like, oh, you're crazy. But for his body type, right, Bob, I want you all to think about this. For someone who's 6'9", who can get to the hole as easily as he can, yep. how much better of a three-point shooter do you want him to be looking at this year? That's not the point. The point is that the point is that he can't shoot like Steph. That's the point. No, 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 no. I understand he can't shoot like Steph, right? But there are times where LeBron can catch five. And I'm, there's not very many players who can do this in a in a snap. Can be like, oh, we need five threes right now. LeBron be like, oh, cool. Bam. Yeah. Win. Bro, win. Win. What are you? No, you can't. Okay. Okay. Win. Win. He just did it against the Clippers. What do you mean? And he did the same thing against Brooklyn a couple of nights ago. He did it against Brooklyn. He did it against, you know what's funny? He did it I'm against saying, Steph. He's, he's, he's done it before. He's done it before, yeah. But he's not, He LeBron is not, hey, Brian, we need five threes. He's going to go get it done. Like, that's Bro. not Bron, That's no. not Bron's no. MO. That's not. No, 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 no. But what I'm saying is, okay, he can't shoot like Steph, but he can touch that Steph realm for moments when his team needs it. Like, I've seen no one else can do it. There's a reason why I think LeBron has the, also the record for most times outscoring the opponent in the fourth quarter. He's done it 19 times. I think the next closest person is Kobe at, like, six. So that's almost four times. Like, I, I, I think y'all don't – not only does he have all those attributes on top of it, he might also be the most clutch player of all time. You know, like, you know, the time, you know what kills me because I've had to kill – like, I've been watching LeBron since he started, right? And so I've had to battle with this narrative that he's unclutched. It came in the fourth quarter. You know in Kobe's prime from, I think, 07, 08, and 09 seasons, you know who led the league in fourth, fourth quarter scoring? James. James. Oh, LeBron, LeBron James. James. Interesting. But people will tell you at that time that LeBron couldn't close. And the only reason they said he couldn't close is because he didn't have the ring yet. That's the only reason. Right. So in 2000, I believe it was in 2009, uh, the 0809 year, the year that he won the league MVP. So he led the league. Not only in, not only did he lead, not only did he lead the Cavs in points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals. Right. Not only did he do that, he led the league in fourth quarter points, and in se- he led the league, he led the league in second half points. He led the league in points on the road, and he led the league in points in the fourth quarter. And Are people still- and and people will look me dead in my eyes and tell me he's not clutch, and I'm like. I think clutch is a little bit different. From for me, clutch is a little bit different, mm-hmm. right? So when I again, I, I just want to make sure that we're clear when we're talking about James as a long ball shooter. I think it's a I, I think it's a testament to him to put that in his game. That's number one because that was that's the way the game was going. A lot of guys didn't do that, which would explain why they faded. James saw the game going that way and put that in his game and became a respectable long ball shooter at 35. I think he's got eight se- I think he's got eight seasons of thir- not, not 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 just not just this season, not just this season. I think it's eight or nine seasons where he's got where he shoots 35% or more on the long ball. I think he's got I think he's got eight or nine seasons where he does that. That's not common. That's number one. What I what I won't do is I won't put him in the same category with Curry off the strength that it's different in the aspect that Curry is a consistent. Long ball Correct. shooter. James Correct. can get James can get James can get going. You'll see a night where James cracks seven of them. He'll crack five of them. Curry cracks five of them on a Tuesday. That's who he is. Maybe 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 James can crack seven or eight of them, but that doesn't mean that he's on that pace. I mean, he, he's not right, on that. Right, level. right, no, right. I, he's I, not. I no, 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 no one's no, on that. No one's on that realm. No, no one's on that realm. Now, now, when you talk about being clutch. Again, when I think about clutch, I don't just think about a guy getting buckets. I think about a number of other things. Like, for example, Scottie Pippen, in my estimation, and this is not my opinion, this is a fact, is one of the most clutch players in NBA history. Well, why do I think that? It's not just because of buckets. I think about the fact that Scottie Pippen, defensively, what he does. I think about the fact that in 1991, when he moved over and slowed down Magic Johnson. In 1993, when in, in, the, Eastern, in, the, in, the, in the NBA Finals, when they play against the Phoenix Suns, they're up. Oh, they're, they're up. The season, the series had just started. Danny Ainge has a wide open look to tie the game. Scottie Pippen comes and blocks the shot for the game. That's clutch right there. So they're playing against the Utah Jazz in the <clears throat> NBA Finals in 1997. In 1997, that's a one possession game. Who comes up with steal to end the game and give the ball to Kukoc to win it? 
Scottie Pippen does. That's clutch right. right there. That's not stuff that 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 that's right. not stuff that just that just goes by the wayside. Carl Malone in game one is coming down the gut. Carl Malone's coming down the gut. He runs Scottie Pippen over for a charge, which is foul number four. Now he's got to sit down. That's clutch right there. That's not something that can be, that's not something that can just be 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 just you know waved off. So when I think about clutch, I don't think about you just hitting a buzzer beater because I can kick the ball to Steve Kerr and he can hit a buzzer beater. Does that mean that right. he's more clutch than, right. than, a, than a guy who's slowing another guy down? So when I see LeBron James, who after they lose by 20, they lose by 20 to the Chicago Bulls in game one of the Eastern Conference Championship in 2011, and the switch is made where James goes, I'm going to deal with Derrick Rose, who I'm six inches bigger than, and I got 25 pounds on him, and I shut the door on him, and I shut the door on the series. That's clutch right there. Right. That's, and when people cool. talk about and when people talk about the de- like defense and the sailor, I'm like, he's not gonna play that defense, of course, 24-7. But the Nobody fact that can. a guy that, yeah, no one is, but it's not that when he just doesn't play defense. He also shuts people down. Like it's not like, oh, he slowed the down. Like against Kawhi, like this dude outscored the Clippers, right? And shut Kawhi's water off. I'm talking about zero. Bob, no, Bob. Go watch that. Go watch what he did to Kawhi. And that happened. That happened. That happened. No, 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 no. It didn't happen. It happened twice this year. That was the second time he did it. Nothing from Leonard. Last five. That's the second time he's done it for this year, Bob. We shut him off when he was on one on one at year twenty one. Nah, bro. I I keep telling you, people do not understand what they are watching. I've watched many sports. Many like he's incredible. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy why he's here. Enjoy why he's here. Yes, well, that's a I, fact. I, all right, football. I appreciate you pulling up. Uh, you know, I check us out again on Saturday, man. Absolutely, sure. absolutely. All right, bro. No doubt, no doubt. So, man, yeah, I, can't I, believe, I can't believe y'all just sat there and capped for LeBron for ten minutes. Nah, man. It, it, it's not it's, <laughs> again. It's it's not cap. I I want to. I, I didn't want to go overboard when we talk about Curry and the shooting. Like, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> right, let's, right. let's chill out on that right there. Hold on, <laughs> hang on. I'm not going that far. I'll walk to the cliff with you. I ain't going over the edge with you, though. No. Uh-uh. Yeah. I'm not doing that. No. I'm um, not doing that. The one thing that you did kind of touch on, and we talked about this before, I think we talked about it on the panel, is that clutch word. And and just kind of like you talked about, uh, Scotty Pippen taking that charge on Malone. That's that's clutch. And it's not the end of the game. Clutch, clutch happens in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. If this right. team, this team is on an eight zero run, they go down there and bang another three. Now it's eleven zero run, and I come and get a get a layup, get a stop, get a you know get an assist. That was a clutch moment to yes. stop that to stop that run because that yes, that that could have put us to bed, you know. Mm-hmm. So you know y'all got to make sure. And now it, I don't know, maybe we can change that terminology, call it something else, and just and just let clutch be the end of the game. But as far as importance goes, those those times are just as important as now, what we consider to be clutch. I think we can I, I think we can keep the word clutch, Ox. I think the issue okay. is is let's expand it, not just to getting buckets, because it's way more than just getting buckets. You could be Sorry. clutch and do other things besides getting buckets. Dennis Rodman was clutch. I mean, how, how clutch is it when a team is on a on a on a on an eleven oh run and then now we start to cut into that lead, that eleven turns into seven, which turns into four, which turns into now a one possession game. Why? Because Dennis came up with two big rebounds to get them to get one stop for us. That's clutch right there. That's not just doing my job. That is clutch. As a, and especially when it's in the third quarter, we're, 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 we're late in the third quarter and now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of the game and you end up coming up with two big stops to slow them down. That's huge right there. That is, and and yeah. now we got the momentum going into the fourth quarter. That's huge, one hundred percent. That's huge. So I think Definitely. you can very well just. I, I I don't think we just. I don't think we can just relegate clutch to just buckets. I think it needs to get expanded more to defending, rebounding. John Stockton throwing a seventy-five foot one hand pass to Carl Malone for the game. I mean, that's clutch right there. That's yeah. big time to do something like that. Yeah. Let me see. Who do we got next back here? Um. Who's Joseph S. Okay, let's go. Let's go. What up? What's up? What's up, brother? Yep. All right. So first, I just want to say, like, I've been watching y'all for like a year now, ever since that Nuggets leak or the Nuggets heat finals. Yep. And then, you know, my bad if I'm like a little stuttering, like just see, like hearing y'all for like a year and like talking to y'all, it's just different. 
So the first thing I want to talk to you about is like the Celtics. Mm -hmm. So one thing I feel like the Celtics are in like some sort of like limbo of like being the best team. Cause to me, like their entire success relies on Tatum for me and how good he's going to be in the clutch. Mm -hmm. Cause when I watch Tatum in the clutch, like he's good, but he can be streaky at some times. Mm -hmm. Like in the Buck series in game six, he puts up 46. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw him in game six. Hasn't, uh, what's it called? He hadn't made a three all game that hits three in a row, four in a row to seal the game. Game 16 seven, in the fourth quarter. Six, 16 in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Game seven goes for 51. And then the next time I'll see him in Golden State, game six, he puts up what, like 14 points? Mm hmm. And, you know, like, I'm watching him. He's looking like me in a pickup game on game point. Like, I'm putting my head down. You pass it to me. No, you you win this. You win this. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't. I think that I, 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 I think I know where you're going, but I want you to continue. Keep going. So I'm just sitting here thinking because I think on paper the Celtics are the best team, but I think the Nuggets are the best. I think the Nuggets are the best team for the simple fact that when the game gets down to, like, you know, last two minutes, you need to score a bucket. Mm -hmm. I think Jokic or Jamal Murray does it better than Tatum. And I think the difference with that is, is you've seen them do it. Yeah, that is. That's, that's true. What it would have, you can't really, when you're talking about, when you're talking about players being one generational, two clutch and three being great, you can't talk about them like that until you've actually seen them do it, right? So up until that point, they're just players. And that's who Jason Tatum is. He's that guy. Until you actually see him get it done, it was the same logic with Jordan. It was the same logic with Olajuwon. It was the same logic with a lot of these players who, as good as they were, yo, you're just not good enough. You're not. You're not as consistent as not, yeah. uh, consistent and enough. I, uh, sorry, the, you difference, sorry. The, was... the, the, diff the difference here is those guys who once they got it done, there was a level of confidence that you saw in them after they did which would explain why they continued to get it done after that. Yeah. And I'm not trying to get on the train of, like, hating on JT or anything. You know, what he's done since, like, turning – he's, like, what, 25, 26? 26. Like this, last month, just turned 26. 26, yeah. So, what, four conference finals, one finals? Mm -hmm. It's impressive. Yep. And I, impressive. he's going to have to, like, mature in a bit. But, like, I think it just goes back to what you said. Like, I'm kind of just looking at players that have done it before because mm -hmm. when I look at a person, like – a Kawhi Leonard, a, one of the best closers in the game, where right. two minutes left, just throw him the ball, he'll get everything done. We're winning. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, once I, I – I think it's like what you all say all the time. Winning changes a lot. You it look does. at people different when they win. It does. 100% it does. And, and a guy like Jason Tatum, until that happens, this is going to be the narrative on him. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, real quick, though, um, how do the Celtics – not not necessarily just star power, not necessarily Jason Tatum and Jokic, but how do the Celtics actually match up against the Nuggets? Like in in the in the finals, how how do the Celtics beat the Nuggets? I think that they beat them. One, they got to speed the game up. The Nuggets don't play that fast, so they got to speed the game up. Number two, they got to take advantage of that Nuggets zone. So the Nuggets go zone to protect. Or to protect Joker a lot of times. Now, Joker, I find him, like I saw, I saw him a couple nights, a couple of days ago when he played against Cleveland, where he he doesn't really play a lot of defense on, on guys that he doesn't think can score, like Jared Allen. Mm -hmm. You gotta make the, you gotta make Joker defend. And you gotta put Joker in action where he's gotta defend. And then when they go to zone, you gotta exploit that by putting him, by putting KP, KC, KP in the middle of that zone. And on top of that, you have to be able to knock down open shots. If your game plan is to shoot the three, which is what the Celtics do is shoot the three, you can't have 26% performances. You can't have 31% performances where you go seven for 30 for the game. That can't happen. That just cannot happen. You have to be at least average. You have to at least be on, you have to at least be average. Speed the game up. You got to get on the backboard, jump Joker as much as possible, and see if you can and see if you can generate a lead. Going into the fourth quarter because if it's close, I really don't like your chances. Yeah. I don't. Right. I don't. You know, last five yeah. minutes of the game, I don't like the chances. Watching the watching Lakers Nuggets last year, like I'll go, they'll go into like the last five minutes. Lakers will be up five, and I'm like, it's over. It's already. You over. already know where we're going. You already know where we're going, and you know that they can't stop it. 
on an off, on an off note, bro. When I think about it, Jokic has got to be one of the most like demoralizing players to play against. Like the some of the shots he hits, it's just like, what are you supposed to do against? And it's him? not luck, neither. By the way, it's not yeah. luck when he hits those shots. It's stuff that he actually works on. So when he hits that behind the head, off the wrong it's leg, like, eighteen feet away from yeah, the basket, it's like, because yeah. Yo, uh, yo, yo, Joseph. To, for you to say, for you to put it that way, and just it, you know, it, it gave it gave me flashbacks of having situations like that. No, nah, because and, like, and yeah. that feeling is crazy. And like, like yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't really think about it that way at all. But when you bring it up, it just reminds you, like, man, when you're playing somebody like that, that is rough. That's rough. Yeah, because <laughs> I I've only started playing basketball like for three years. I've been a swimmer my whole life. Yeah, and so when I'm playing pickup and like. There's just that one dude who like ugly jumper, but everything is straight cash. You could play the best defense, so just throw it up. It's just cash. It's just like, or I'm just, I'm it, just looking. It, it's like, what are we supposed to do against? Put him? it, put it, put it in your terms. You got that guy in the pool who he's all over the lane, but when we get down the stretch, he looks like a swan. Like he looks like a shark where he's just, and you're like, what the hell am I supposed to do with yeah. this guy? How can I, how can I catch this guy? I can't. But Chuck, going, back to, going back to Nuggets for Celtics, I, I actually agree with you. Uh, put Jokic in as much action as possible. Maybe get him in foul trouble early. That's a good way. And also, you talked about it a little before, but, you know, make Jokic beat you. We'll eat, like, 30 to 40 points from Jokic, but we're not going to eat 15 assists from him. No. I, I view it from 15, the, I, 18 assists? That means everybody else is involved. I view no, it in the same know. way that the Bucks saw KD. KD, if you put up 60 and beat us, fair enough. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't put you. KD can't go for twenty, and then this dude go for twenty two, and then Kyrie Irving go for twenty five, and then this other dude go for fifteen. We got no shot, right? You know? Right. And going well, back to oh, go sorry. ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go, you, go ahead. You got to. Okay, so one more point about the open shots. Uh, just on an off note, I'm a Mavs guy, mm -hmm. so when I'm thinking about open shots, I go straight to T Tim Hardaway Jr. and I'm just thinking. Get Hardaway up the floor. <laughs> you're, Get like, Hardaway up the floor. I understand if, like, you're an Aaron Gordon that's, like, three-point shooting is not your job, not your ability, but, like, you get put in those situations, whatever you miss. But if you are a shooter and you're getting as wide open as you get from a guy like Luka, you have to be hit. You got to be hit. You have to. Job. That's a fact. That's Miss, a missing wide open jump shots is not – you can't do that as a professional your basketball player. Job. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Well, like yep. I, say about that. I also we, want to talk about one more thing. We got to bounce, though, brother. As, as much as we'd love to talk to you, but we got we we definitely got to go, though. But thank you, my man. Right. We really appreciate right. it. Right, catch, us on, catch us on Saturday, Joseph. Yes, All right, yes, yeah. I love the Saturday. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah. No Me, doubt too. About Me too. Me too. Yeah. No All doubt. Right. Yeah, yeah, good, good, uh, good guest. Appreciate the insight, mm -hmm. Joseph, for sure. I wish you would have told me you're a Mavs fan from the beginning, and I would have kicked you off. No, no, no. I'm just playing. Yeah, more. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Um, Tim Hardaway, chill town. I'm. I've been trying my hardest to to defend Tim Hardaway. Right. And I think. I think. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to stop. Ox, you being a glass cleaner and a rim protector. When you see a a, a, a guy, a, a small guy, just come down the lane, and there's a rim protector at the rim, and he just lets him score. And he's only got like let's say he's only got one foul. He's got no blocks, and he just like for example, um, what am I thinking about? I'm thinking about a uh, white side where he'll just let a guy score. And you looking at the shot, going, I would have smacked that in the third row. I would have yeah. smacked that right back in his face. That's right. how I feel when I see dudes missing wide open looks because yeah. you don't get you don't get those you don't get those kind of opportunities. And not only right. do you not get those opportunities, when you do get them. How demoralizing it could be to other crews, and how much it oh, can yeah. help the team. So if you get a guy, if you get this small guy coming down the gut, and he puts the ball at the rim, and you throw it in the third row, you know what that does to my crew? I don't think about the fact that the shot is in the third row. I'm thinking about the shot getting blocked. Do I want to go back in there with Ox in there? Mm -hmm. I don't know if mm -hmm. I want to go in there with Ox. In there. Second guess. Well, it, yeah. I don't know if I want to go in there with Ox in there. And if I do go in there with Ox in there, I better not bring that in there. I better not bring that. So the same logic with a guy missing a wide open look. If I'm wide open, 22 feet away from the basket, and I don't get a lot of wide open looks, if I miss, what does that say about the rest of the crew? Like, damn, how many wide open looks are we going to get? That could be demoralizing for our crew. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the lead guard, what he's not going to do, 
is he's not going to have that much confidence in me if I keep missing. Now, if I miss one or two, he's going to come back to me. But if I'm missing six, seven at a time and then make one, he's not going to keep coming to me. He won't. Yeah, man, I'm, I might. I hate to say it, yeah. I, I might. I, I might be out on Tim Hardaway. I never thought I'd say that. But hey, make some shots, brother. That's what you pay for. Please. Anyways, though, you know it's always a good day when we got Brooklyn in the house. Let's see what my man, Big Fan Breezy, got to say to us. What up, Breezy? It's Brooklyn in the house, without a doubt. Yo, so yeah, I'm just happy to be here. You know. Um, I mean, I'll be happy to be going to the playoffs, but I ain't making this about Brooklyn because uh, we, we might get eliminated tonight. And I just hope if they can hear me because they probably watch this show, don't get eliminated in the Barclays, please, man. Just win tonight's game. Um, but I kind of wanted to flip it. I wanted to ask Chill something. Uh, I see you talking about playing through injuries. I'm not necessarily a fan, but they are great examples like um, Isaiah Thomas back in the day. But James Harden kind of messed that up for us, you know what I'm saying, versus the Bucks in that series. But my question to you, Chill, is who got the deepest bench going into the playoffs, in your opinion, that if one of their biggest players like Jokic is out or, I don't know, maybe Jimmy Butler from Miami, mm-hmm. what, what bench has the best support to maybe survive a road game in the playoffs? a good question breezy that's a good question breezy because i think the clippers have a have a really good rotation um i feel like cleveland's got a good rotation too milwaukee could i feel like milwaukee could survive if dame went down off the strength that they could now turn their they can now turn their team into something of a defensive team where we don't have to hunt dame where we can turn our team into Giannis, pat beverly where we now, Giannis, Pat Beverly, Brooke Lopez, uh, Bobby Portis, where we now just are defending. We're not worrying about scoring as much as we are slowing you down. Um, the Celtics, I feel like if if they were to lose one of their one of their main guys, they're deep enough that I think that they could survive for a game or two. Um, those are the teams that I'm thinking about off the top of my head. Yeah, nah, that's that's pretty much the question I had. Because I think a player like Derek White, he showed up big this year. Yes. Um, and so you know, without Drew Holiday, Derek White, he might, he might, he might show up. Um, this is this is a future question. I only want I got one future question. Out of the players that's going to the playoffs, except Cam Thomas, what player do you think can crack the top ten scoring? Maybe Luca, maybe Anthony Edwards, all time. You you see any of these players that that uh you know uh that good? I don't. Well, in order for that to happen, you got to play a long time. See, if you're talking about the like Jabbar, uh, all of these guys that played a long Jordan, Bryant, these guys that played a long time, you have to play for a long time. I don't know if I'm, I'm not sure if Luca, because I, I I can be honest with you when I say that the top ten in scoring, I think that uh. Didn't KD just pass Shaq at nine? And Shaq is at like almost 30,000. So in, yeah. order to get to the, in order to get to the top 10, you're going to have to crack 30,000 in order to get to that. Or you got to be at least close to 30,000. In order Damn, to get to 30,000, so you're going to have to play a long time in order to do that. So is Luka going to play that long? Is is Jason Tatum going to play that long? I don't know how long Shea Gildas Alexander is going to play. I'm thinking about these guys right now that, are, are, are up there. Is, is Joel Embiid going to play that long to crack the top 10 all-time in scoring? I don't think Giannis is going to play at that level for that long. I think Giannis is going to – I think Giannis could crack the 20, 25,000 mark, but to, to get to 30, that's good. That, I think that's going to be a lot. The, the one guy – I mean, it depends on how long these guys play. If Luka plays long enough, I think he could do it. Oh, all right. That's what's up. Yo, I'm just enjoying the show, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got. I, I wish I could talk about Brooklyn, but, you know, it is what Brooklyn it is. Brooklyn in the house. Good to talk to you, fan Breezy. You know where to find right, brother. I'm in the chat. Yes, sir. Hey, Chill, why don't they add playoff points to your total? I, because it's two separate seasons. That's why. And because it's two separate seasons, the playoffs are – I mean, it's the, the, the lights are brighter. The stage is bigger, and because the stage is bigger, it's more significant. So I don't want to have a guy who scored six thousand playoff points 
I'm gonna add that to his regular season total. No, you know, defense is a different in the playoffs. Offense is a different in the playoffs. You are a player are different in the playoffs. Your scoring average goes up. Your 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 field goal percentage. Your game improves. So I think it's two separate seasons, which would explain why mm. I feel like they separated. Yeah. I wish that I, I wish that would put it together. I I, I like that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? All my yeah. I want all my points to count. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, couple more. Let's see. Emmanuel, what's up, bro? What up? Yo, what up? Good. What's good? What up? So there's a video going around calling uh Tim Duncan overrated. I don't know right. if you've seen it. Uh, I have not. So it's by Jimmy Highroller. So he basically said that uh he basically got a lucky to be drafted by the Spurs because of the D-Rob injury. And he got to play with like a bunch of like Hall of Famers and teammates right. of that sort of nature. How do how do you feel about Tim Duncan's career and is he overrated or not? I do not think Tim Duncan is overrated. In fact, I feel like that championship that they won in 2003 is very underrated. And I feel like it's underrated because people see Mono Ginobili, they see Tony Parker, they see Bruce Bowen, and they see what they talk about those guys because of what they became. That's not what they were back then. That's not who those guys were. David Robinson was washed in 2003. He was over. That was his last season in the league. He was over. Steve Kerr was over in 2003, one of the better long ball shooters in the game. He was over. Tony Parker was in year two. I'm sorry, was it year two? 2000, 2001, two. Yeah, he was in year two. And they were talking about replacing him with Jason Kidd that year after they won the NBA championship. They weren't sure about him. Bruce Bowen was on his fourth team. He, was, he had been in the league at that point, I think, for like six or seven years. He was on his fourth team. So there really was – Malik Rose was a rotation guy. Um, Kevin Willis was 40-something years old. This was the kind of crew – that he was running with, and it was Tim that was, Duncan. That was the year when Sean Elliott was fresh off the kidney. Uh, no, that was that. Oh, that was that, ninety nine. That, that, that was yeah, the first that was ninety nine. I'm talking first, about two thousand three. I ain't even talk about ninety nine when he had seven journeymen running with him, and David Robinson was on the back end of who he was because he had a back injury. He didn't. He wasn't the same as who he was before he had that back injury. Sean Elliott, who was also another guy who was good, but he was a complimentary player. Avery Johnson, I believe Avery Johnson in 1999 was on his fifth team. Jerome Kersey, I think at that point, was on his sixth team. At that point, he had left the Trailblazers. He had been playing, I think he was on like four or five different teams at that point in 1999. Um, let's see who else was on that team. Mario Ellie. Mario Ellie, I believe, was on his fourth or fifth team when he was playing with the San Antonio Spurs. Antonio Daniels was, that was his second team because Vancouver had given up on him. Um, that team was also, that wasn't a team that was put together, that was together for a long time. Malik Rose was also on that team. That team wasn't put together, that, that, that wasn't a team that was put together that was like that. That was a team that was put together with a bunch of journeymen, and in, in addition to it being a bunch of journeymen, in a lockout shortened season, and Tim Duncan was clearly the catalyst on offense and on defense, how much better he was than everybody else. The rebounder, how much they... How much responsibility he had on him, on both the offensive and defensive end of the floor, cleaning up guys like Avery Johnson messes, cleaning up messes, or helping out guys like David Robinson, who wasn't able to get it done as the number one. When we also talk about in 2003, when we move over, so we, we transition from Avery Johnson and we transition from guys like uh, Terry Porter, who was on that team. We're transitioning from Sean Elliott to now Bruce Bowen and Tony Parker and Steven Jackson, uh, Malik Rose, who was still on that team at that point. When we, we transitioned to guys like that, Tim Duncan, who now is better, still the catalyst for that team, being able to score in the post the way he does, clean glass the way he did. The way that they, the way that they implemented him and the way that they relied on him, there's no way that I can honestly say that he's overrated at that point when we're talking about a guy who was the catalyst in order for them to win. And then in 2005, to go up against arguably the best defensive team that the NBA had ever seen and beat them in a dogfight and go up against Ben Wallace and that Detroit team and beat them in a dogfight with Manu Ginobili, who's now coming into his own after year three. After he was in year three at that point. Now coming into his own. Bruce, Bo I think Bruce Bowman Bruce was still there. Yes, these guys now coming into their own. Duncan was still the catalyst. There's no way that, that that he was overrated during that time. He was he was the catalyst in what they were doing. No way. For sure. The one thing I will push back on, like 
David Robinson getting hurt the year before Duncan uh, got there. If Duncan is healthy, he's probably not on the Spurs and his career isn't the way it is, but he still wins like maybe like three, three or two championships. I don't think he wins five with another team. It depends on where he goes because if he ends up with the Clippers, they could have wrecked him. They yeah. would and they, the Clippers they 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 didn't they never had a guy of that caliber, especially during that time, like in '97. I can't imagine Tim Duncan ending up with the Clippers in '97. They would have wrecked him. They had no idea what they were doing, none whatsoever. So it definitely depended on fit. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And one he, more he thing, went, uh, he could have went to another team. You never know. He could have went. He could have went to Boston. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And him and him and Paul Pierce would have got busy. So he could have won. Yeah. He could have won more than five rings. We never know what could have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Now I said one thing though. Him blowing a three-one lead in 2011 doesn't get talked about enough at all for some reason. In 2011. And in 2011, they lost to the Grizzlies. The, they lost to the Grizzlies. That was the number. And if, I, if I'm not mistaken, they lost to the Grizzlies. They lost to the Grizzlies in back-to-back years because they lost to them in 2010 too. They Grizzlies did. were the, yeah, the Grizzlies were the eight seed and they beat them. Yeah. So why do you think that one doesn't get talked about enough? Because like, if it was like you know when Kobe blew through one lead, it was talked about a lot. If LeBron blew a three-one lead, it was it would be talked about enough. So why don't you think that one in particular is talked about? I don't ever remember him blowing. I don't even remember him blowing a three-one lead to Memphis. I know that as an HC, they lost to Memphis, and the reason why that was talked about is because. Oh, not, I'm sorry. Yeah, it wasn't the he lost to an AC. That's sorry. It wasn't yeah, he lost it. Well, well yeah, the, re- the reason why it doesn't get talked about as much is because the the narrative during that time was Tim Duncan was hurt. He had a knee injury, and that's why they ended up losing. Even though he played. I think he played 80 games that year, and he was fine in the playoffs. He was fine in the playoffs. And I don't think it gets talked about because that was the narrative on Tim Nugget. He was getting older. He had a knee injury. So they were kind of decimated when in reality, no, they weren't. All right. All right, that's it. That's all I yep. Right on, Emmanuel. Appreciate yep. you. Catch us on Saturday, bro. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, Chilltown. Let's get to the nitty-gritty. Let's yep. get down to business. Mm-hmm. Joel and B makes his – Comeback game, we call it that. Comeback after injury, yep. bounce back game. Um, re- I don't know, whatever. To, l- last night, mm-hmm. um, in my by my humble opinion, I think he looked really good for a guy that's been down for two months. Um, mm-hmm. he played a while, like I was saying earlier today. Yep. I was watching to see how he was moving. Um, what did you see from Joel Embiid, and how did you feel about his comeback? Are you are you confident that he's healthy right now, or or what? Well. Number one, and you and I had this conversation earlier today. He looked lighter for for me. I I I I, I it, it looked like he he doesn't look as heavy as he did. Maybe it's the hair. I don't know, but he did look a, he did look a little lighter, and that could be because of surgery and the fact that you know what I'm eating. That could have happened. Now you get back in. Now you get yourself back in shape. I was looking. What I was looking at from him is I was looking at. What kind of, how productive could he be on the floor? I'm not actually in favor of him coming back because I know that this knee injury that he's had, it's reoccurring. And if you end up losing him for the rest of this year, you could potentially lose him next year too. And now we got to have a way different conversation that nobody is prepared to have. Nobody whatsoever. So I'm, I'm actually not in favor of him. I wasn't in favor of him coming back, but it's obvious that he has not forgotten how to play basketball, that coming off this knee injury with the limited amount of time that he has to get himself in shape because he doesn't really look like he's in basketball shape. He looks like he's just – I I can get up and down the floor. I can do that. But with that being said, he doesn't look like he's in good enough shape to take them far. But he mm-hmm. doesn't – but he, he hasn't forgotten how to play basketball. That mid-range money – that mid-range game is still money. That mid-range game is still money. He can still handle it. So these these are things that are just instinctual with him. I haven't played basketball at this level for two months. For over for two months, I haven't played basketball at this level. So now I'm going to come out here, and I'm just going off what I remember. I played a little bit of five-on-five five in practice, but that's not nearly as – that doesn't compare to getting out actually 18,000 people out here to our national television, and I'm getting ready for an actual game. No, it's not the same thing. But from what I saw – I saw a guy who was just more instinctual, who didn't look as out of shape as I thought he was going to look. He did look a little lighter. I just wish he had more time. If the playoffs wasn't in two weeks, I would I, I would have a better feeling about 
Joel and B coming back as opposed to now two weeks from this week, two weeks from Saturday, he now has to get himself prepared for the for the ultimate test, which is the playoffs. And I don't think he's got enough time to get himself in shape, not just from a playing standpoint, but mentally to mm -hmm. get himself in shape for that. Because when I've been playing for two months and kicking ass the way he was kicking ass, if I was yeah. doing that for two months, going into the playoffs, I, Ox, I'm licking my chops. Whoever right, won it right. can get it. Whoever won it can get it. Only except I'm coming off of an injury. I'm not really sure in terms of my mobility. And now I got to go into the playoffs and I got to play against the best of the best. Well, my confidence isn't what it would have been had I not been injured and been playing for two months. Yeah. And you made a good point right there, too, just with the mental part of it. Like, people got to understand. And I'm sure in, in any sport, and I'm, I know it's not just a basketball thing. It has to be any sport. When it's, you know, when there's two minutes left in the fourth quarter and you've played 33, 34, 35 minutes, you're gassed. You got to be able to think. You can't, you know what I'm saying? It's like. You got to be able to think while you're tired. You got to be able to make the right decisions when you're tired. I've seen people just be so, be tired out there. They're just throwing up bull stuff. You know what I mean? Because right. they're just like, oh, man, I don't know what to do. You know, you, so right. that's that could very well be a thing for um, for Joel, you know, with those double teams and making bad decisions or just forcing up certain things. So right. that's, a, that's a good point. Um, what I want to get into is this, Chill. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton... Carl Anthony Towns, um, Joel. These are just uh, to name a few players that have been that have been in injuries. Yeah. We um looked at it like Tyrese. I believe Tyrese Halliburton was playing through the injuries. Yeah. Because he wanted to get be eligible for all all teams, all all NBA teams, things like that. Carl Anthony Towns will not be eligible, correct? Right. Joel Embiid already is not is not eligible. He's back. What Scotty is, Pippen, Scotty Pippen in '98, he wouldn't have been on the All NBA team or the All Defensive Team either in '98. If that was right, going on, okay. today. yeah, he wouldn't have been on. So, it. in hindsight, do you or do you think Tyrese Halliburton is re, is regretting playing through it? Do you think that he would have should have um, maybe sat down? I don't know exactly what it was. Maybe if he needed to get something cleaned up, uh, right. quick surgery or something, or just rest. Right. Um, do you, so in, in in comparison, do you think Tyrese? Because Tyrese made it, right? He's eligible. I think so. Yes. Right. So, so Tyrese he did what he had to do. Um, Joel did what he had to do. Do which which one do you think is was the better call? Well, Tyrese Halliburton he had a he had a uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was a groin injury. He slipped and yeah, he, he strained his groin. So there right. was nothing torn. Right. There, there was no ligaments torn, no broken bones. So there was nothing like that going on. So the problem with that is, is there's really nothing that you can do about it except just rest. There's really nothing else right. you can do about it except rest. When you have a hamstring injury, when you have a groin injury, there's 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 no amount of therapy. I can only I all, all I can do is just rest. It's like a, it's, it's almost right. like having a broken bone where there's really not much that I can do about it. But with that being said. I can understand where he's coming from as long as it's not something that's life threatening, something that I'm going to regret later on in life where, you know, I might not be able to walk correctly when I'm 42 years old, when I don't play basketball anymore, when I'm 48. And, you know, how is this going to affect my quality of life? I understand guys having knickknack injuries. When guys have knickknack injuries, I feel like you can play through that. But if it's something where it's detrimental, like for example, Joel Embiid. That's why I, I had a, I had a difficult time, and I think you and me had this conversation, Ox, about him coming back this season because I wasn't comfortable with. It. I was not comfortable right. with him coming back this season off the strength that I was worried, especially a guy that big and that heavy. I'm worried, yo. When Joel Embiid is 42 years old, what's life gonna look like for him? Because I watched Kevin McHale play on a broken foot in '87 in the finals. Kevin doesn't walk that good today. Kevin walks with a limp because he played on a broken foot. Was it necessary for him to play on a broken foot? I don't think so. But at that time, we're playing for the NBA championship. And he felt like it wasn't going to get any worse. He wasn't thinking about, yo, when I'm 50, I might be walking funny. When I'm 50 and I want to play pickup, I probably won't be able to do that because I can't really run anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was thinking about that. I feel like today the implications are so much more than what they were back then. Even though my reputation was my game, Today, it's more of 
if I play these amount of games, I can make the all pro team, which will enhance my accolades, which will also enhance my bank account because I'm going to get paid more. I don't, what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to risk injury long term in order to make another two or three, or I don't know, another 20, $30 million. I don't want you to do that because I just don't feel like it's necessary to do that when you already make it what you're making now. Now, on the flip side to that, Ox, when we're talking about, you know, guys being injured, I mean, isn't that the story of winning the NBA championship? Like being right. good ain't good enough. You right. need some things to go your way. It's not a coincidence that Isaiah Thomas rolls his ankle and steps on Michael Cooper's foot in the 88 finals and the Lakers go back to back. But it's also not a coincidence that the very next year, Magic pulls his hamstring, and he's done for the playoffs. So being good ain't good enough. You know, Jordan, mm -hmm. as good as the Lakers were, and I still think that the Bulls would have beat the Lakers, but it did help that James Worthy and Byron Scott got hurt. That did help the situation, right? Definitely. So as good, as, I feel like as good as you are and as good as your team is, we want to see you mano we mano. We want to see – your team is as, 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 as healthy as they could possibly be. And this team, as healthy as they could possibly be. We do want to see that. However, there's nothing wrong with, you know, Lady Luck knocking on your door and going, I, I, I got you in this particular situation. Because, yeah. you know, being good ain't good enough. You need some things right. to go your way. I mean, we've, we've seen a lot of different times where injuries have played a key role in teams winning championships. I mean, you just brought up a few. Um, I mean, every, in, recent, in recent times, everybody's favorite is 2019. Right. I mean, there's been so many times. Like, man, I'm just I mean, thinking we can, back on all these, all these, what, can, what they call, what was it? What was it the the Bucks? They were calling that the uh, emergency room ring or yes. something. They were calling it like hospital ring, the hospital, hospital, ring. Right. Yeah, hospital right. ring, right? But you know, with that being said, these injuries they implicate a whole lot of things. So, for example, Ox, when Derrick Rose goes down in 2012, well, what does that now mean for the Miami Heat? You don't have to deal with them anymore. As opposed to if he was healthy, how much different does that not this not just not just that series? How much different do the Miami Heat look if they still got to deal with Derrick Rose at full strength with Lou Aldain, with Joaquin Noah, with Carlos Boozer? Now they just got Jimmy Butler. How much different do they have to? How much different do they look? How much different is James's Cavs team looking if Paul George doesn't break his leg? How much different does that Indiana Pacers team look? So as good as you are and as good as your team is, if you get some things to go your way, I can't fault you for that because that's part of the game. Part of the game. How much different are we talking about the Miami Heat if Jason Tatum doesn't roll his ankle? How much different are we talking about the Atlanta Hawks in 2021 if Joel Embiid, his knee isn't screwed up? How much mm -hmm. different are we talking about these guys? So right. Don't forget that Lakers ring with the right. – Dragic and, uh, uh, and uh, Bam out of bio, so Bam right and buckets. If these guys are, if these guys are at full, don't get me wrong. I feel like during the playoffs, you are as healthy as you could possibly be. Everybody during this stretch of the season, at some, on some level, is beat up. On some level, these guys are beat up. So with that being said, you do need some things to go your way. And if it means you know Dragic, who's one of the better rotation guards in the league. If it means him going out of the lineup, hey, man, I'll take it. That's right. one less guy we got to deal with. That's right. one less guy. To, not that Not that I wouldn't deal with him if he wasn't on If he was on the floor, because I would absolutely deal with him Deal with him if he was on the floor. But if I don't have to, Ox, guess what? You're not, mm -hmm. not going to twist my arm. No, I'm good. Right. Okay, it's and fine. It's, it's, and it's, it's not that we won't deal with him, and it's also not that we're praying for an injury, but if it happens, hey, it happens. Hey, um, yeah. I want to know, with these injuries that are today, right now, I mean, Trey got hurt, Cat, Joel, uh, man, a lot of people got hurt this year. Mm -hmm. How is specifically, specifically Carl Anthony Towns and Joel Embiid, those two injuries, has that changed anything in the postseason? Sure it has, because – if you think about the end result, why were the Lakers in the Western Conference Championship? Well, because they had gotten healthy. Why were the Denver Nuggets the last team standing? They were the healthiest, right? Why were – why what, what was going on with the Miami Heat? They ended up being the healthiest in the East. So to now have Cat go out of the lineup, this is, a, uh, this is arguably your best offensive player, 
Not only is it your best offensive player, your second best glass cleaner. So now I have that coming back to the lineup, but I don't have that though. I have him coming back to the lineup. I don't have that. And because I don't have that, we now we are now hampered against the Minnesota Timberwolves because with Cat with Cat not being at full strength, now we won't be able to stretch the defense like we were if he was. We won't be able to clean glass like we were if he was healthy. We won't be able to get up and down the floor like we were if he was healthy. We won't be able to pose that threat to a Denver Nugget team who, as, as good as they are, we pose the biggest threat to them. And the fact that he's now injured and, the, and, and his mobility is now in question, which means now his shot is in question because you know this as well as I do, Ox. Your jump shot, if your legs aren't there, your shot isn't there. So the fact that his mobility is in question, if that's not going on with him, that's another plus for the Denver Nuggets. That helps them out tremendously. That helps out not just the Denver Nuggets. That also helps out a bunch of other teams in the Western Conference because with him going down, that gives us a leg up on these guys. Are we better than them? No, but we got a better shot now because he's because he's not at 100%. Mm-hmm. Right, right, definitely. Um, <clears throat> and has the, MV, has, has the MVP race been affected? By Joel's injury or well, any injuries at all? Sure, it's, it's definitely been affected by his injury because he was at the top of the uh, at the top of the list. So before he got hurt, it was consensus that Joel B was looking like the league MVP. So when he goes down, there are now guys who move up the list because there was a considerable gap when Joel B was doing what he was doing. So yeah. now with him getting hurt, guys move up the list. And that gap kind of closes a little bit, even though I do think the Joker, I think he's the consensus winner. But there are some guys who are a little closer. Well, well, you you got Jokic being the um, consensus winner, but if Joel doesn't tear his meniscus, are you confident that Joel repeats MVP this year? If the way he was playing, Big Ox, yes, I think that he would have won it. Go- I think he would have won it going away. I don't think that it would have been close. I mean, we're talking about a guy who was 35, 10, and six. And they were at the top of the Eastern Conference. Not only were they at the top of the Eastern Conference, he was also playing at an all defensive. He was playing at an all defensive level. The way he was playing, the way he was rim protecting, manning the paint, what kind of offense that they ran, the way that he was doing what he was doing for that crew. Had he was had he been able to stay relatively healthy, not necessarily going out of the lineup and and, and getting surgery, but just relatively healthy, I think he wins the league MVP going away. I don't think it's close odds. I think I can agree with that. I'm pretty sure. I think I can agree with that. Yeah, I'm. My mind still kind of, kind of running from the conversation we were just having as far as like um, the finals and things like that, and playoffs being affected by injury. What, what are some of the more even, even more than we already talked about? 19, uh, yeah, 2019, uh, 20. What was that? 2019. We talked about yeah, 21. We talked about. What are some other playoffs that were directly affected by injuries? Teams that probably won that wouldn't have won if, or that you think wouldn't have won if it wasn't for um, other people getting hurt? Well, what about 22? I mean, don't just stop with 21, Big Ox. So, so Kawhi Leonard tears his Achilles, tears his, his oh. ACL. He's out for the rest of the season next year, too. So mm-hmm. the way he was playing, and he was also playing at an all NBA level, that opens the door for the Golden State Warriors now. So they don't have to deal with him. They don't have to deal with Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. They don't have to do that. The 2015 Warriors, right? Um, the 2015 Warriors when both Kevin Love, who they had to march through the playoffs. He got hurt in the first round against Boston. We tore his shoulder up. Kurt, Kurt, oh, yeah, Kelly Olenek. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, we tore his shoulder up. And then Kyrie Irving cracks his knee. But before Kyrie Irving cracks his knee, he's also, before he cracks his knee, he's also in and out of the lineup during the playoffs. Don't forget, Big Ox. He gets hurt. He only plays half that series against the Atlanta Hawks. When they swept him, he only played two of those four games because he was in and out of the lineup because of that knee injury, right? So because of that knee injury, that completely hampers them. I mean, it, it was it was definitely it, – it showed the next year when those guys got healthy what could have been the year before. That definitely wow. happened. Um, Derek Rose getting hurt, Paul George breaking his leg. Um, Victor Oladipo, him also getting hurt. Like what that Indiana team would have looked like had he been able to stay healthy and what they were building with Sabonis, right? What they were building with Sabonis, what they were building with that unit, how much better they could have gotten 
had Victor Oladipo not tore up his quad. And that completely threw that completely threw a monkey wrench in what he was doing. So, I mean, injuries stamp champions. Injuries do a lot for NBA champions. And, and we can't discount if a guy gets hurt, right? We can't discount if a guy gets hurt, how much that helps another champion out. That's a big deal. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, man, I hate, I just hate injuries in sports. I just wish we could just have one season where everybody was healthy. Yeah. I just want, I just, I know it'll never happen. I, yeah. I know it never will, but man, I wish we could. That would, that would just be a beautiful season. Right. Um, we do got somebody else in the back who we got Mike in the back. I guess he wants to finish that conversation about Kobe yesterday. And also, before we do bring just in case he doesn't, I want to say this. It depends on what conversation you're having as far as who's the best Laker. If you're talking about who's the best player to play for the Lakers and wear the jersey, and right. Bron's been there long enough now, if you ask me, to be right. considered a Laker. You know what yes, I mean? Yeah. So, so I don't think like, he's in that conversation, though. I don't. I don't think he's in that conversation. Right. But but it's it's it is it's it's not crazy to have five guys. You can well, he played. He been there longer than he been there longer than Chamberlain. So right. And, and I got Chamberlain them on my list, so right. But mm -hmm. it's, it's it's not crazy to have Jerry West, Elgin Baylor, Elgin Baylor, right? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic mm -hmm. Johnson, right. and Shaq, right? And you, so you, I just made a list and didn't say Kobe or Kobe or Le LeBron, right? So it, it's not completely insane, right. but let's see what Mike has to say about this. Yo, Yo Mike, are you there? Yeah, wait, can you hear me? Yeah, what up? All right, so I'm trying to talk about. Hold on, let me get. I'm trying to talk about Chris Paul and Scottie Pippen as an offensive player. Okay. So, I'm, it was like on the panel. I don't know how long ago it was, but it was like lower dub or somebody it said you disagree with Chris Paul being an offensive player. I thought that was crazy. You know, I think Chris Paul clears as a playmaker and passer. Of course, better ball handler. I think he's a far better shooter. I just think he's a way better offensive player all around. Way better offensive player all the way around. Maybe it's, let me not say way better this like, but a little bit of a Mike, game. Mike, hold, hold on, hold on for a second, Mike. Don't come up here with the way better. Yo, you just was in the you just was in the chat talking about you demolished me. Get to the logic. I just said the logic. No, you didn't. Way oh, better playmaker and passer. Oh, oh, first, way better first, shooter. Almost, first better ball almost. handler. Okay, better ball handler. Better passer. Better shooter. Okay. Better oh, I think he's where a you better at shot right creator now? off the dribble. You sound wild right now. Like, where you at? What? You sound wild right now. Where you at right now? Oh, I'm not. Hold on. Let me go inside. Yeah, you sound, you sound wild right now. We, cause we, yeah, we, we sound like you on the tunnel. back for sure. Yeah, we do. We're getting some wind in the back. So My bad. It's, it's windy outside. Right. Yeah, that's better, Mike. That's better. Right. So now let's get back. Let's let's get back to Chris Paul and Scottie Pippen. So Chris Paul being Chris Paul being the the, the better offensive player than Scottie Pippen because he's a better distributor. I'll give you that. I think he's a better. I think he's a better passer. Right. I think he's a better passer. I do think he's a better long ball shooter. Even though Scottie Pippen had a damn good mid range game, Scottie Pippen was better in transition. He was a better finisher at the rim. Um, well, hold on. Well, never mind. Never mind. Keep going. Offense turns into offense turns into defense, which that's part of playmaking. So with Scottie Pippen being a playmaker on both the offensive and defensive end of the floor, he was a better defender. So him turning that off, him turning that defense into offense also ties into being an offensive player because I turned that defense into offense in terms of playmaking. So with that also being said, with that also being said, I'll give you the passing, I'll give you the long ball. Um, what else did you say? I said. Um, I don't know what I said, but okay, you, you I want to get to. I want to get to finishing. So, are you saying it because of his size and athleticism? Scotty Pippen, and his Chris Paul wasn't close to the finisher at the rim as Scottie Pippen was. He wasn't. I think he, he had a touch, like better touch around the rim. With you think he had better touch? So, do you do you do you do you care about a guy playing above the rim? I mean, yeah, that's finishing. Yes, that is finishing. And I think that your touch, even though Scottie Pippen also had great touch around the rim, the separator could very well be finishing over big guys at the rim, dunking over big guys, dunking over smaller guys, because that creates an element of intimidation that you can't with just a floater. 
I guess. But what do you mean you guess? Yeah. If you know anything about basketball, a guy who's dunking on a guy, that's a psychological advantage than a guy right. who's right. I give you pick the better finisher based off the, the athleticism and length. I'll give you that. But and then you said you said transition, right? Keep going. He him? You said yeah, he's a better transition player, right? Keep going. So right, so I think when you combine all of it together. So he's a better transition player and finisher. Chris Paul has him in every other category. What other? Because you only you only named three categories. You said shooting the basket. You said shooting the three and passing the ball. That was it. I That's think he's said. better in the mid range too. I think Scottie Pippen had a pretty good mid range. I don't think he clears him. I think he is a better mid range shooter than than, than Scottie Pippen. But better ball handler. I mean, Scottie Pippen was a good ball handler also. But Chris Paul, you agree? Chris Paul was a better ball handler, right? I, I I'll give him the edge as a ball handler, sure. All right, so better ball handler. You agree he's a better shot creator off the dribble, right? No, I don't agree. No, I, I, I will not agree with that. In the half court? No, I don't agree with that. Oh. Scotty Pippen, Scotty Pippen was a damn good one on one player. Damn good. So we we just said he's a Chris Paul is a better ball handler, finisher. I'm not finisher. Just because you're a better ball yeah, handler, you're a better shot creator. So if he's so, better at all let's, that, let's, how can he not be let's, the let's, better? Let's chill out with that. So, what do you think? How, why do you think Pippen's the better um, shot creator off the dribble? Because he's bigger. He gets, he drags bigger guys out. I feel like he can get to the. I think he can get to his spots. I feel like he could get to the rim. So Chris, Chris Paul, Paul doesn't draw bigger guys out on the pick and roll. Well, Chris Paul draws bigger. Chris Paul. Chris Paul draws bigger guys out. The difference because you can't you can't play drop on him because he can pull up and knock down the three. And so can Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen not actually to the level of Chris Paul. Scotty Pippen actually showed you that in 1992. And in 1993, he actually showed you that if you play drop coverage on him, he can knock down the three. That's actually how he expanded his game. So he actually showed so you that. Chris Paul showed us that his whole career. Like, that was something. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. In 2008, he didn't show that he could knock down the three consistently. So that's not okay, true. But that's I'm not talking true. about at peak. No, so don't say his whole career. Then. You just said his whole career. So don't say at, don't, right. don't tell me that one minute it's, it's his career and then at his peak. So now you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. Which one is it? At his peak, that's what we were talking about. No, we weren't talking about that. You I just said, you just said, you just said, his whole career he's been doing that. So no, he hasn't. That's not true. Now At what you're doing? Peak, is you're it wasn't the to the people it's, called, pulling. it's called moving the goalposts. That's what you're doing. That's what you're trying to do. But even still, if you want to say that Scottie Pippen, if you want to say that Chris Paul is a, if if you want to say that Chris Paul is a better overall offensive player than Scottie Pippen, you can say that. I'm taking Scottie Pippen. Hold on, but when was Scottie's offensive peak? When was Scott, When was Chris Paul's offensive peak? I think those Lob City Clipper years. And how'd that go? We we're not talking about winning. We're just talking about one side of the ball. Right. Okay. We are talking about one side of the ball. How'd that go? It went great. Keep going. So in his Lob City Clipper years, because it went because it, it went great for Scottie Pippen. In it, it went great for Scottie Pippen in 1993, in 1994, 1995, and 1996. But you, you're just talking about team success and all that. I'm talking about the reason why they were as good as, the reason why they were as good as they were is because of what he was doing. It's not the team success that I'm. But talking it's about. two sides of the court, so if we were talking about all around player. Okay. It would be Scotty Pippen, but we're just talking about offense. We're talking about, we're talking about offense. That's all we're talking about. We're talking about offense. We ain't talking about on the other side of the floor. We're talking about offense. Is that correct? So in yeah. 1993, 1994, 1995, 1996, the reason why the Bulls were doing what they were doing offensively was because of Scottie Pippen. I mean, but what, Jordan, but was those, a, Jordan was able to do what Jordan was able to do because he had a, because he had a distributor in Scottie Pippen. Tony Kukoc was able to do what he was able to do because he had a distributor and a playmaker in Scottie Pippen. Right. Jordan, but let's, so let's talk about guys like DeAndre Jordan making first team all NBA with Chris Paul. We all know he wouldn't have did it without him. We don't know that because we didn't see him without what? him. Oh. So that's not true. We don't know that. So well, when I think for DeAndre Jordan would have made I'm first sorry, team. Mike, hold, how, do you know on, that, how do you know that he wouldn't have if he played with Rondo? How do you know that he wouldn't have did that if okay, he played but, with Aaron Williams? How do you know that? I you mean, know maybe, that. but. You don't know mm. that. So wait a minute. One minute, one minute, he's not going to make it. And then now it's, well, maybe. You don't know if he would have played with. I don't Chris know. You split, you split in hands, but. I'm not splitting hands. What we, you doing? We know Chris Paul made DeAndre Jordan look a lot better. We know that. And so could have Rondo. 
and so could have Russell Westbrook. Right, I'm not saying, but we're oh, just talking about Chris Paul. You just said, no, we're not just talking about Chris Paul because you just said that he wouldn't have done that without Chris Paul. You don't know that. All I, You know that Blake Griffin, Chris Paul, he made those guys better. I think okay. it goes both ways, Mike. I think I think they made him better. They also he also made them better. I appreciate you pulling up, though, Mike. We got to keep it moving. Come come back through on Saturday if you want to finish this conversation. Yeah, and, 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 tell, and, tell every, and tell everybody that you demolished me too. Go ahead, tell everybody. Oh, <laughs> My bad, Mike. I didn't mean to cut you off, bro. Uh, but we do we do got to keep it moving. Appreciate getting, you pulling getting, up. Getting a call from the suits. Yeah, appreciate you pulling up, Mike. Appreciate everybody mm -hmm. else that pulled up as well. We value your opinions. Don't ever think we don't. Um, that's what we, that's what we up here for. Y'all can come chill with chill, learn something. Hey, if you got something to teach us, I'm I'm, I'm willing Please, to learn. I'm me, always a willing, willing learner. Put but me look, on. after this, I want y'all to go to playerschoicemerch.com. Get you a casual hoodie. Y'all know y'all some casuals, or for the ex casuals, get a t-shirt. Hey, they got we got ex casual hoodies too in different colors. I know y'all saw the one Ron had on yesterday, that cream color one with the orange. I'm really kind of upset I didn't get that one. I, I want one of those too, huh? Yeah. I want I'm, one you know of those too. I'm, about to do? I'm, I'm about to see Ron in a couple of days. I'm probably gonna take him out of chill. I'm probably hey, gonna I'm absolutely. probably coming back with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably coming back with that for real. But, but um but yeah, yep, man, it was I'll a great this. episode today. I can't wait till Saturday, Saturday's episode. We'll see y'all then. Uh, what else was there? Oh, that's right. Make sure that you like this video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Share this video. Get the algorithm moving. Y'all want us to keep coming with this top tier content? We got to keep the algorithm loving us so we can keep generating this, gen generating everything we need to generate in order to keep on dropping top tier content. Y'all make sure to do that for us. Chill Town, what you got? Hey, man, you know what it is, guys. Drink, put on a suit, drink water, don't drink and drive. Hey, man, call your mother. I know your mother love you. Call your mother, man. Just say mm -hmm. what's up. Make sure she good. And if you had a couple too many and you're in the area, call my man. He'll come scoop you. I promise yeah. you, he'll, he'll come get you. He will come get you, yo. But it was good to see you guys, and we will see you too. We will see you soon. But until then, take it light. Take it. Absolutely, man. guys. It was dope all to right, see you. All right, y'all. We'll catch y'all on Saturday. And we'll see y'all tomorrow. In the morning on the panel. Mm -hmm. You know where to find us at. Absolutely.